And Patty's right, I'm going to talk about not becoming numb. Because you know what, it's a busy world. You may have noticed there are screens everywhere around you all the time, flashing and beeping and boinging at you. Information spews at you every moment of your life unless you deliberately make an effort to stop it. There was a great interview years ago with Stephen King and they asked him why he thought some modern horror movies didn't do such a great job. And he said that when people are unrelentingly bombarded with something, anything, even being terrified, Eventually, you can't maintain that level of fear and worry and anxiety anymore. And you become desensitized. You can tire of reacting even to horror. Eventually, we become comfortably numb, immune to the problems of the world. Like the man in our reading this morning, we stop hearing the stars sing, metaphorically. And life becomes about getting from one point to the next and surviving the rat race without getting run over. And not having to feel all the stuff. There's a poem, Pursuit, by a writer named Stephen Dobbins, and I, I can't recommend his writing enough. He says, each thing I do, I rush through so that I can do something else. In such a way do the days pass, a blend of stock car racing and the never-ending building of a Gothic cathedral. And through the window of my speeding car, I see all that I love falling away. Books unread, jokes untold, landscapes unvisited. And why? What treasure do I expect in the future? That's not what it's all about. It's not about just chewing through life, watching it flash past through the windows of your safe and speeding car of a life. It's not about learning to cope with the bad by learning not to see or smell or hear or taste it. Because when the bad and the annoying and the sad go away, the good goes too. When the world is too much with us and it becomes all too much, it's time to stop and change our focus. It's time not to become immune to the world, but to become alive to our own place in it. Because sometimes the life you see and save and savor has to be your own. William Ellery Channing said, each of us is meant to have a character all of our own, to be what no other can exactly be and do what no other can exactly do. And Channing's answer is as good a place as any to start. We're here to be what no one else can exactly be, to examine our lives as Unitarian Universalist minister James Luther Adams told us to do. We are here to be our own story to tell and experience our own stories as truly and well as we can. Because it's the transcendent wonder found in the small moments of our day-to-day -day life, the tiny miracles of our daily stories, that's what saves us from that numbness, that desensitization, and lets us continue to really live I'm a huge fan of mythologist Joseph Campbell. And Campbell says the quintessential story is always going to be the hero's tale. And this is one that most of us are familiar with, even if we don't know it by that term. So the hero's tale goes something like this. The hero starts humbly. He or she or they go out into the wide world and they conquer obstacles and enemies, and they return from the quest wiser, maybe richer. They've suffered trials, they've suffered torments, and they experience the full range of human emotions. The hero, Harry Potter, 
The Wizard of Oz, Die Hard. They're all heroes' tales. Our own lives are also heroes' tales. They're tales where we make meaning. We grow in our ability to understand what's happened, and we make increasingly more complex decisions based on our understanding of each piece. Campbell says this, he says, look, life has no meaning. The answer isn't Douglas Adams 42 or some big religious secret. Life has no meaning, Campbell says. Each of us has meaning and we bring it to life. It's a waste to be asking the question when you are the answer. I would say that the first of our six UU sources agrees. It says that we recognize direct experience of transcendent mystery and wonder. There's a lot of other words around that, but what it comes down to is your opinion is enough. Your experience is enough. In order to avoid desensitization, in order to avoid becoming numb, we have to slow down. We have to immerse ourselves in actually experiencing the moments of our life and making meaning out of them. We are not just driving through. Some of you may be familiar with the late great writer David Foster Wallace. He's the guy that wrote This is Water. He said, as I'm sure you guys know by now, it's extremely difficult to stay alert and attentive instead of getting hypnotized by the constant monologue inside your own head. It may be happening right now. He said, 20 years after my own graduation, I have come gradually to understand that the liberal arts cliche about teaching you how to think is actually shorthand for a much deeper, more serious idea. Learning how to think really means learning how to exercise some control over how and what you think. It means being conscious and aware enough to choose what you pay attention to and to choose how you construct meaning from experience. Because if you cannot exercise this kind of choice in adult life, you'll be totally hosed, in his words. And he said, so I submit this is the real value of your liberal arts education. It's how to keep from going through your comfortable, prosperous, respectable adult life dead, unconscious, a slave to your head and your natural default setting of being uniquely, completely, imperially alone day in and day out. I thought about this. You know, as we go through our days at work or at home, Sure, we're the center of our own universe, and it's easy to get stuck in this view. It's easy to tune it all out and to fall inward to a place where your story is the only thing playing and nothing else matters, and you can just ignore the world speeding past. It's easy to become so numb that while you're no longer feeling the pain of the world, you aren't feeling the joy. You aren't alive to your own life. You're just feeling the story go by on the page. Everything we do, we rush through to do something else. Stars, what stars? Singing, what singing? But this is why JLA says the unexamined life isn't worth living. It takes effort to move our world viewing lenses from their default setting, to realize that everyone else is also a hero's tale. Some of their stories are harder and more tedious than ours, but ours are valid and valuable, but we have to really experience it. And when we do, it makes us more able to hear the other stories. This is the reality of being well-adjusted, Foster Wallace says. You get to decide what has meaning. You get to decide what to experience. We all choose 
how much of the world to experience, what is sacred, what is important, what is meaningful. We choose the story that we want to see and live. We choose what's important. We each have a hero's tale, and we are both the hero and the director. And like any director, we can choose where to linger. It takes effort to change the lens away from focusing only on the flood of high adrenaline things happening around us. It takes effort to examine the world a little more closely, not to ignore the flood of the bad, but not to let it drown out the wonder of the good either. It takes effort to tell your own story and to hear the stories around you and to see the world in all its glory. Because a sunset is still amazing even when the world seems to have gone mad. That effort, that examination, that slowing down to look, that's the real answer, that's the truth, that's the elephant in the room. The meaning of life is choosing. We avoid the numbness by daring to believe that the stunning moments, the ordinary miracles, the triumphant stories of our own days have worth and value. So slow the car down, listen to the stories, choose the lens, live vibrantly, and refuse to be comfortably numb. Blessed be.